Great, why don't we get started? Again, welcome. For those who are joining us for the first time, welcome to our student experience webinar series on social um, justice and sustainability, um, social impact. This is a great opportunity for you all to learn about how social impact and sustainability are shown through Sloan and at MIT. We are thrilled to have a wonderful group of panelists, um, some second year MBA students and a recent grad Ada from um, Sloan Fellows, which is a great addition to our panel. And I'm also joined by Emma Caldwell, who is in charge of working with the sustainability certificate. So we will do an overview of the certificate, which is a great asset to working in sustainability and social impact. Before we get started, we do have a Q&A button. Um, you can find it at the top or the bottom of your screen. Feel free to submit questions. In the interest of time, we will not be answering questions on admissions or admissions requirements. We will have an upcoming session in September about a program overview and application tips webinar. Um, we do our best to get to all questions, but uh, we have a huge number of attendees today and you know, we'll do our best, but if there's something that we didn't get to, feel free to email admissions and we will respond as soon as possible. So why don't we get started? Um, as I said, I'd like to introduce Emma. Um, Emma, do you wanna say a quick introduction about yourself and your role at Sloan? Sure. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Emma Caldwell. I'm the Academic Program Manager at the Sustainability Initiative. So we're a research and teaching initiative that supports students through curricular and extracurricular programming as well as internship opportunities and plenty of different ways to engage in a rich alumni network of people working in sustainability and impact driven careers. So I can talk a little bit more about that maybe later on Anne, or do you want me to? Yeah, why don't we talk about that after I introduce the panelists. Perfect. Great. So we'll start um, with uh, Brandon and then we'll just go right through the line. Brandon, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you did prior to Sloan, what you're involved in at Sloan, and what you did this summer. Yeah, hey folks, Brandon Lamb here. Um, yeah, I guess chronologically. So I started my career in management consulting at BCG, and then I worked for a few years in uh, Uber, working on strategy there before coming to Sloan. I Coming to Sloan, I, I found out I actually did want to pivot toward a career in sustainability. So I focused a lot of what I've done in Sloan on sustainability. I'm currently pursuing the sustainability certificate. Uh, I'm one of the managing directors of the Sustainability Summit, and I'm a president on the Food and Agriculture Club. And the more fun thing I do at Sloan is I'm also part of the Rolling Sloans, which is our school rock band. Um, we're still trying to figure out how to do concerts. It'll probably be a bit more virtual this summer, uh, this semester, but it's going to be super fun. And then this summer, I worked at an alternative protein startup called Nature's Find. They basically try to grow alternative protein based on microbes. Uh, so as opposed to like plant-based or cell-based protein, this is protein basically grown through a fermentation process. Uh, yeah, so that's me. Great. Excellent. Next. All right. Hi, I'm Kelsey Lafreniere. I am a second year MBA as well. Um, so prior to Sloan, I did environmental policy mostly. I worked at a clean energy and energy efficiency nonprofit for a couple of years. And then I worked in the Senate doing environmental policy and energy policy for about five years. Um, and I interned at BCG over the summer. So switching places with Brandon. Um, at Sloan, I have also been involved in helping out with the Sustainability Summit. I was the marketing director for the Clean Energy Prize this past year. Um, and I was also part of the MIT team that won the Patagonia case competition, which was about reducing textile waste, um, which was a really cool experience. Um, yeah, and I just got a puppy this or yesterday. So sorry, I'm a little bit late. We're kind of like rushing around with the puppy. But anyway, I'm very excited about that. So I can talk about that if anyone's interested. Great. What kind of puppy? A mix. Excellent. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, next. Hi, everyone. My name is Kavitha. I'm also a rising second year at Sloan. Um, I'm originally from Illinois, but prior to Sloan, I spent um, eight years in New York. So I was working um, first, I went to school at NYU, then I was working at BlackRock in asset management, um, and I 
focused a bit on sustainable investing there, which is how I knew I wanted to go into impact investing. And so at Sloan, I've kind of been focusing my experience on working with social enterprises as well as getting more experience across the board in impact investing. Um, so similar to Brandon, I'm also pursuing the sustainability certificate and I was supported by the sustainability initiative as a Sloan social impact fellow this summer um, to do my internships, which was at a small enterprise assistance fund. They do growth equity investments in women owned enterprises in Southeast Asia. Um, and I'm currently at the IFC um, on their climate team. Excellent. Next. Hey everybody, I'm Anna Shepard. Um, right now I'm outside of Portland, Oregon, um, and we'll be returning to Cambridge very soon. Class I'm super excited. Um, so I worked at a solar startup, and at Sloan, I'm the president of the Sloan um, I also, yeah, also did a different case competition in the fall that was with AB InBev on the Renewable Energy Strategy. Uh, it was on the leadership team for the MIT Energy Conference. And this summer, I was, uh, and still I have one week left, I'm training on the energy and sustainability team at my first and I think and I'm, some people are having trouble hearing you. Um, so maybe, I don't know if there's a, um, turn off your video for a little bit to get your internet cable more stable, but we will um, work again in, in asking you some questions, but that's a great overview. And finally, um, Ada. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ada Zhou. Uh, I'm from Sloan Fellow Program. It's a one year MBA program for, um, working profession working over 10 years so i'm a little bit older than side um so as known uh, i take some class regarding the uh, people and profit and uh, supply chain management uh, in the sustainability certificate uh, over the summer i did two things one is uh, representing one for the world uh, is a non-profit organization help teach students how to do philanthropies uh, in impact investing or in uh, donation in general. Another thing is I launched my own company in uh, like social impact, particular for female uh, like health. So that's me. Great, and for those who are unfamiliar, Ada was in our Sloan Fellows MBA program, which is just a one year program, just over one year. And so I think it'd be interesting for people to know how you compress so much into one year at Sloan. So we will get to that in a minute. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for now, and then I'm going to share um, some information on the certificate. So I'm going to pass it along back to Emma, and if you want to take a deeper dive into their certificate and how people can get involved, that would be great. Awesome. Thanks, Anne. So um, like I mentioned, I work at the Sustainability Initiative. So we're an uh, office here that supports students and faculty um, doing research and curricular design and work in sustainability. So we take a broad approach to that. We think about sustainability, not just from an environmental ecological perspective, although of course that's key and important, but also from a social economic perspective as well. And our mission is to deliver the best education, apply academic rigor to real world problems and empower leaders everywhere to take action so that humans and nature can thrive for generations to come. And we kind of see ourselves doing that in a number of different ways. So, and could I? bother you to go to the next slide. Thanks. Um, so I think a number of these awesome students mentioned different kind of ways that they've interacted with the initiative or ways we've had the pleasure of interacting with them. So we have a lot of curricular programming that we do um, and the certificate is part of that. Um, and then we also offer different career and network building opportunities. I guess the certificate kind of encompasses both of those different uh, buckets. So um, I can, next slide, thanks. The sustainability certificate is one of the 
certificates offered at Sloan, it's a five course certificate. So there's three required courses and then two electives that you'd have to take across the Institute. And you can choose from a number of, usually it's around 60 a semester of electives that count for that. Um, so you can really kind of hone it in on the area of sustainability that you're interested in. The three required courses are designed to give you more of a broad perspective. And one of those is an action learning course called the Sustainable Business Lab, where you work on a team of um, students as basically sustainability consultants who work on a project um, over the course of the semester. Um, and so those three, those three core courses are developed to be broad and then you hone in on your interest area and in maybe energy or food and ag or impact investing through the two electives. Each year we graduate about 50 to 65 students. It grows every year um, and it's not just for Sloan students, it's for any master's program at MIT. So it's a great interdisciplinary program and a way to meet people from across the institute. Um, and then when you graduate, uh, you get to go into a network of around 350 graduates with the certificate so far. So it's a great networking opportunity and you join the ranks of people like Ada who are out there doing really impactful work in the world. Um, so this is just really quickly our team. Um, and then the next slide has QR codes in case you're interested in learning more, you can sign up for our weekly newsletter. Um, and then if you join us at Sloan, we have more information on Sloan groups and kind of our weekly programming through a sustainability speaker series and that kind of thing. But the sustainability certificate, like Anne mentioned, is a great way to get really a deep dive into kind of the, the landscape of sustainability, but not the only way to engage with the initiative. Um, and we're here to support students through partnerships with student facing clubs and um, organizations that uh, are focused on sustainability, like the Food and Ag Club that Brandon mentioned and a bunch of different case competitions as well. So I'm here for any questions. And Emma, while I'll have you on, um, how does someone, you know, get um, involved in the certificate? Is there an application process? Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about the stuff that they have to do uh, before matriculation. And is it possible to do the certificate while you're enrolled in maybe the HKS or LGO program or some of our other non MBA programs? Absolutely. Those are all great questions. Um, so the certificate, unlike track, so there's different ways to kind of do a deep dive in a field of study here, tracks and certificates. So for the sustainability certificate, there's no application process. Basically how it works is I hear from you early on when you first get to Sloan and you let me know through an email that you're interested. We have a quick form where you just tell me kind of which sustainability impact areas you're interested in from climate change to impact investing to social enterprise work. Um, and then we keep track of you in our database and make sure that you know the requirements to complete the certificate. And then you kind of audit yourself along that path. And we behind the scenes audit and make sure that you're doing all the classes that you need to to complete the certificate as well. Kind of one touch point is SLAB, that action learning course that I mentioned. That's where you really get to know our teaching team, all the faculty and staff kind of who work in that team um, and how you kind of really embed in that network. Um, and then Yes, it's 100% open, like I said, to any master's students. So um, we design it with kind of an MBA in mind, but we make it doable for one year programs like Sloan Fellows, um, mid career programs like Sloan Fellows and EMBAs, but also LGOs and HKS students. Um, I think this past year we had eight LGOs graduate with a certificate, um, and I think about five dual degree HKS. Um, MBA students. And because HKS has kind of a social impact focus, or at least you can kind of design your course of study there to be that way, um, we sometimes use substitutions with HKS courses to count for electives. So it's very doable as a, a dual degree candidate or an LGO. Great, thank you. All right, I wanna get into uh, talking with our panelists. A lot of people wanna know why you decided to get an MBA, whether you wanted to take a deeper dive in the, the field you are currently in, or as Brandon said, make a career switch. Why did you wanna get an MBA or Sloan Fellows MBA? And why did you decide to go to Sloan based on your future career goals? Um, and it's open to anyone to answer. I can jump in first. Um, so 
I was um, at BlackRock, as I mentioned, um, doing investment advisory on insurance clients in both public and private markets and traditional and sustainable investing. Um, and as my client base started focusing more on impact investing, I kind of rode that wave to become the point person on my team. Um, and based on that experience, I was able to make it, I would say maybe 20% of my workload, but I knew that I wanted to make a kind of transition into a job that would make it 100% impact investing role. Um, and so I kind of went down many different avenues to figure out what the right next step would be for me. Um, and that include exploring the CFA, a public policy degree, an MBA, and just a regular career switch. Um, so my approach was to talk to people at impact investing firms who kind of had the roles that I was interested in and figure out what they thought. Um, and the advice I got from the people I spoke to was that CFA is only if I'm sure I wanted to be in the public market space, which I wasn't. Um, and that the MBA, especially in hard times, it can be a bit more marketable um, in terms of hard skills and a public policy degree. Um, which I'm glad now that I made that decision because you never know when something like this is going to happen. And so that's what kind of convinced me to go down the MBA path. Um, and I would say my strategy for the MBA program was to focus on um, one social impact um, early stage ventures to see if I wanted to perhaps either become an operator within a social enterprise and or um, from the VC perspective, just build that empathy with founders. Um, so I was able to work with three social enterprises over the school year. Um, one was through the sustainability lab as part of the sustainability certificate, which was super awesome. Um, and then I also kind of focused on getting more impact investing experiences. And I mentioned my internships, but one of the other ways that Sloan supported me was through the finance research practicum. Um, taught by Professor Rao during IAP, which is the month of January that you can either take off or choose to take a class. And she has specific um, impact investing projects that she sources. And so I was able to do a project with closed loop partners. Um, they focus on the circular economy and I was specifically helping them with their growth equity sustainable fashion fund. So um, that was my process and I feel like my strategy coming in obviously adjusted a bit as I figured out um, what Sloan had to offer, but I think it, it worked out really well. Um, and I guess, sorry, the second question was why did I choose Sloan? Um, I, I felt like it was offering me a very broad experience within sustainability. Um, like Emma said, you can take the certificate in many different paths. Um, and so I was able to explore whether I wanted to be in an operator role within a big or small organization or be an impact investor. And the second thing that really um, made me interested in Sloan was that people just had such different backgrounds than the people I went to undergrad with or who I was surrounded by at my firm. So there was a lot more people, not just in finance and consulting, which is what I was used to, but also the heavily in the startup world, the tech world, the nonprofit world, a lot of people who wanted to start their own companies and everyone is passionate about something and no one is afraid to go off the beaten path. And I think that was the exactly the environment I needed to have the freedom to explore all these different options. That's great, wonderful. Anybody else wanna share why they decided to get the MBA and, and why Sloan? Okay, Brenda, you go first. Uh, okay, um, so I get, I actually, uh, when I was going into MBA, I actually didn't even think about sustainability at all. And I originally applied, so I was working at Uber before I was in, you know, big tech. And I originally wanted to stay in big tech, but I wanted to get into product management. So, um, like, in, it, if, like, if you check my Sloan application and everything like that, I'm writing, all, or like my application, all the business schools, I'm writing about, like, me being a PM in the future and all this stuff. So I actually like wrote my applications and got in intending to just kind of go in, um, go down the route of trying to get into product management and then exiting either going back to Uber or working at Google, Facebook, something like that. And I think after I got in, I started, well, and, and then, I mean, because of that, that was a big factor in me choosing Sloan because uh, 
you know, Sloan's so integrated in a lot of the tech community. And then just even beyond Sloan, just having access to that broader MIT ecosystem, uh, I thought would be just really like professionally a huge advantage for me. Plus like going to the welcome weekends, I feel like I just clicked with a lot of the other Sloanies and a lot of the other uh, admits there. So that gave me some good comfort too. Um, but then I, I, as I started like getting ready to leave my job and then in the first few months of when I was at Sloan, I started thinking more and more about uh, what I wanted to do as a career. And there was so much work being done on sustainability at Sloan that I just got involved in that more and more. And it came to the point where eventually I said, you know, that actually maybe product management isn't for me. And I actually do want to go into sustainability, mo most specifically food sustainability. So coming to MBA, I think I originally wanted to come to MBA to say, okay, here's how I become a product manager. But I think the biggest value it's added to me so far is giving me that freedom to explore different perspectives and actually choose an industry that I feel a lot more uh, comfortable and a lot happier going into. Great. Thanks. Ada? Yeah, I have different story, slightly different. So I've been working more than 10 years. Before joining Snow, I was helping a startup grow from four people up to 600 people across 10 cities. So coming into Snow, my goal is three things. The first is the leadership. I want to know how to lead in a team, like scale to globally. The second is to make our supply chain because the business we're doing is like in food and beverage. So I want to make sure the supply chain, the vendors, are like how to manage that in a sustainability way, how to push them to be more sustainable. The third is actually thinking about how to make our job more satisfying for the employee, how to create a good job, uh, both good pay and both like have the employee engagement satisfaction high. So that's the goal to come in soon. But during the, this year, taking the class from um, Professor Zhang in sustained dynamic, I understand like it's a system, system dynamic thinking. It, it's not only one part. It's all the components that got me into thinking about further, like what happened after the company established or even before that, what, what kind of components need to be think, uh, how to create a foundation for sustainability. So um, doing the sustainability certificate, working on the ACE lab, working on the project um, on sustainability, I'll just get into more and more on Okay, I helped the company to grow from nothing to something great. How about creating my own organization, creating my own company? So that got me into like using the system dynamic uh, framework and using the things I learned from Sloan to create a good job for my own company. So that's how I'm using the things I learned over the year to, to, do, to do things right now. Excellent. And that's a great transition into the next question I have for you all. Was there a particular course in your first year or a particular experience that you had that prepared you maybe for your summer internship or to, to think about your long term career goals, um, whether you took a deeper dive into social impact or maybe in another route in sustainability would love to hear um, about that. Uh, hey, Anne, can you hear me better this time? This is great. Yes. Okay, great. We're good to go. Um, yeah, I'm happy to answer this. So it's already, this class has already been mentioned a few times um, at Sustainability Lab. And that class was really impactful for me. Um, you got offered in the spring. So I took that at the spring um, in the first year. And my favorite part of that class was the product that we did with um, with actual companies um, in the Boston area and others around the world. Um, it was it was a really cool day when they all um, a lot, some people were in person at that time and a lot of people dialed in and pitched to us. Um, okay, it's so like Anna's the audio guy again. I just got a message. Maybe turn off your video okay. or sometimes connect um, to your. Uh, um, phone hotspot. Let's see if that works. Okay. Is this better now without the video? If not, I'll just pass it on to somebody else. Yes. No, this is better. Okay, great. Um, yeah, still technology troubles through all of this sometimes. Um, but so I was talking about the day when all of the companies pitched us with their potential products, which was just really cool to see so many companies, companies that you knew about 
and we're very familiar with um, sharing what sustainability challenges they're facing. Uh, I ended up uh, working with Wayfair. Anna, Anna. Um, Anna? Yeah. I'm going to interrupt you because we still can't hear you. But what okay. I would like you to do is um, maybe type in your response in the Q&A so everybody can kind of see what you're, or in the chat function, and we'll be able to talk about that. And we can try your audio in a minute. How does that sound? All good. You can get great. some great answers from everybody else. <laughs> Anybody else want to talk about maybe their favorite class or experience, maybe an action learning lab, if you've taken one so far that can uh, really speak to your long term goals or what you did this summer. Um, so I also took S lab and had a very positive experience with I can talk about, but um, one thing I wanted to talk about, which was a really great experience this past year was I, I mentioned the Patagonia case competition that I um, competed in with a few other MIT students. And so the prompt was basically helping Patagonia figure out ways to reduce their textile waste. And so I worked with, there were six of us total, um, a few MBA students, an LGO student, um, a couple of PhD students, and a student from the supply chain school as well. So it was really cool getting a bunch of people's different perspectives, all working together to put together um, our idea. And for me, it was kind of my first real exposure to like corporate sustainability since I was really coming from a government and nonprofit background. So I found that really interesting to kind of just learn a little bit more about how to, you know, translate ideas about sustainability and having impact into like a a business setting and you know talking about the impacts that it would have on revenue and those types of things which is not something i was used to thinking about but is obviously really important um, and that was a really great experience that we had great thanks and emma feel free to jump in as well maybe one of you could talk about um, additional opportunities to social impact and sustainability through maybe student clubs that you're involved in or competitions or trips um, and I know you're super involved um, in, in clubs and everyone else too. So yeah, what other, what other opportunities are there to get involved outside of the classroom? Uh, I had two uh, really wonderful trip. One is the Food Agriculture Club. They organized a trip in New York. So we'll get a chance to meet Mama Fugu's uh, executive team and get a chance to try different food in New York City. That was super fun. I also had the privilege to get involved with uh, MIA. I think it's um, an impact investment firm. Like they have a conference in Detroit. It was super fun too. Like I'm, uh, we had 10 conference for two days. One of the day after the event, they, they actually took us on the boat to get a chance to have different experience. Um, I didn't have any background in impact investing. Um, like not, not, no, nothing about it at all. But it actually get me into like what it is and how to measure it. The club really helped me to create the foundation to understanding uh, the concept of impact investing. My goal long term is down the road five to 10 years when I sold my company. So I have money to be an angel investing to do more impact investing. So that really helped me not only creating network, have different experience outside of school, but also get to know the, the basic knowledge about this concept of impact investing. Great. Anybody else? Yeah, Ada, thanks for the plug on the Food and Agriculture Club. <laughs> um, yeah, the other thing I'm involved with that I think has been a really good experience for me has been the Sustainability Summit. So it's an enormous student-run conference that we put on every year that focuses on a different, basically each year we focus on a different uh, subtopic within sustainability. So the previous year it was on mobility. This coming year, it's going to be on uh, food and our food system. So it, it's really fun because with that, you have, I mean, you have so much that you can work on. You can try to, you know, plan out how that whole, how the whole conference will operate, which this year is like a very challenging question for us because it's the first time we're ever doing a virtual conference. So that brings a lot of interesting challenges and um, new ideas that we need to come up with. Uh, it's also figuring out a lot of content about the conference and being able to actually network by reaching out to speakers, forming relationships with different people in the industry and trying to basically like bring a ton of experts all together to get to this new huge day long event that focuses all around some topic in sustainability. 
Great, excellent. One of the questions that we hear a lot is how do you manage everything? How do you balance, you know, your interests and passions and social impact and sustainability with the rest of your core classes or outside interests? Um, maybe you all can talk a little bit about that balance, um, how you are engaged outside the certificate and how you're able to manage a life as a SFMBA one year student or the two year MBA program. I can start. Um, so my strategy was to be involved um, heavily in two, two clubs and then be an active member in a, a third and then just to soak up everything else by attending all of the pitch competitions. Um, so I was very involved in the MIT Impact Investing Initiative and I'm part of the leadership team this coming year. So they put on um, a really great speaker series. We had a career trek in Boston um, that I attended and just kind of socializing events. I participated in the Mint competition through that, which is an impact investing pitch competition where you sor source a social enterprise um, and pitch it for investment by Bridges Fund Management. Um, so MI, MI3 was my first club and my second club was Insight, which is kind of a it's, it exists at most MBA programs and um, it basically is an organization that focuses on startups and venture capital. So how it works is each semester they pair you with a different um, startup to work with. Um, and I focused on making sure it was a social enterprise. So for example, I worked with neighbor schools, um, which is kind of like Airbnb, but for childcare. Um, in Boston and I helped them with their expansion plan to the rest of the US. Um, so those were kind of my two main things outside of um, classes. And I think personally, I think two to be heavily involved in is a lot. And then all these amazing things that everyone else is mentioning, like the clean energy prize, the food and ag prize, um, the MIT 100K competition. I just made sure to attend all of those events so I could kind of take everything in without being necessarily stressed out about being on the organizing team. Um, and I, outside of school and clubs, have a dog and a fiance at home. So I definitely wanted to balance like spending time with my family in addition to being active in the Sloan community. And I think just um, kind of st structuring out what my top three goals are and how my clubs and classes fit into that made me feel a lot better like saying no to things at the end of the day so I could you know spend a Saturday night um, with my fam. That's great. Anybody else want to talk about um, work life outside the classroom just the balance overall between sustainability and your other passions? Um, also, only one year MBA, it, it is really crazy, like I barely have time to sleep. Uh, I think you're going to hear a term called a formal really soon and very often, fear of missing out. Um, I did involve a lot club like uh, hack for inclusions, um, like sustainability, like the, the trip I had. Um, so one thing I keep telling myself is it's okay to not attending all the event. It is okay to missing something. Like the most important thing is have a group of people like student or uh, professor you really like and interact really frequent. Knowing what you really, really want, that is the core thing. Other things is can here and there is okay to missing out. You won't be able to take in all the class. You won't be able to attend all the things. It is okay. It is your life. It's your like like choice. Be be okay with it. That's one thing I have to keep telling myself, and I keep telling my friends. Okay, like we won't be able to show up in three different locations. The second thing is um, knowing what is really what I'm really good at, what I'm really not good at, and knowing how to balance that uh, really well. For me, the system dynamic like. You're going to hear me mention a couple of times. The system dynamic requires a lot of time to thinking through, do the homework. That take a lot of time because I'm not good at it and I really want to be awesome at it. That helped me to create a new organization, new 
uh, company. So I spend a lot of time. And some of the class like ULab is more kind of like chatting or learning how to communicate, how to be a listener, can cheer up a little bit. Before to select class, I understand that class like homework load will help me to help help me to manage the stress level to balance what I can do within that uh, semester. So some tips, uh, but it's fun. I meditate every single day. I make sure I eat well, go to sleep, have well balanced the social life and uh, like course. That's excellent. Thank you. I just want to note that Anna is on the Q&A function. So if you do have specific questions for her, just address to her and she'll answer on the Q&A. But but she did want to share about her experience with the sustainability lab. Um, as she mentioned, it's working with a company on a current sustainability challenge that they're facing. She worked at, at Wayfair, uh, which headquarters here in Boston on their renewable energy strategy. Um, she says, great to learn from the projects and other teams. Um, Emma, can you just briefly talk about the S lab when it happens and how are the projects structured? How does someone get paired up with a company? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So S lab is offered every spring and we recommend for a two year student that they take it in their first spring because we feel it's a really good way to kind of plug in with our teaching team. They will get to know you, you'll get to know them. Um, and also you're going to get to know a lot of other students who are doing great things. Um, either extracurricularly or, you know, coming with a cool sustainability background. Um, so it's a great way to get to know the network of students in this space. Um, so for SLAB, what we do is we try to source usually anywhere from 20 to 30 projects every semester from a variety of industries and fields. Um, and so projects focus more on kind of impact investing, projects focused on food and ag from a renewable energy perspective like Wayfarers was. Um, um, lots of different kind of ways to engage in sustainability and the question of integrating a sustainable strategy with a type of business. So um, we have a class very early on in the semester that Anna was referencing where all the different industry or all the different project hosts pitch kind of their um, different projects and students then fill out a project matching survey where we get more information about your background, your interest areas and your top 10 projects, but we really try our best to match you with one of your top five choices. And also we feel we source really strong projects and so we hope that there's no bad project in the bunch. It's just more based on fitting the right students with the right skill set on the right team um, to help further their learning opportunity. So um, once you're matched, that happens usually in the second week of the course. And then you're supported by both a project mentor with subject matter expertise and a coach who helps you more on the kind of project component, project work part of, of the, the project. Um, and then it goes the entire semester. And at the end, we have a poster session where you present your research and findings. Um, we did that completely virtually this year. And it, it worked out, I think, okay. Um, students were able to kind of like bop around to each other's rooms. It was a lot of fun. So it'll either be in person or online again this spring. Great, excellent. So a lot of you talked about why you want to get your MBA and you know, career is your next step once you graduate. Maybe you could talk a little bit about how you were able to secure your internship or your full-time position. What resources did you use, whether it was through the sustainability initiative, was, was it through classmates, CDO, or alums? I think that uh, would be very helpful for our audience to know about. My is easy. Um, so Aron, so when I get into the uh, MIT MBA program where I already have like a CDO signed up for me, help me to search a job. Before the pandemic is elephant in the room, we have to talk about it. Before the pandemic happened, uh, the CDO and also the certificate organization like Professor from Sunon, they already put me in touch of some organization, help me to get to know them, to interview with them or to just chatting, uh, discover my interests, discover what they need for next year. But the pandemic happened. So two of my, one is over, one is actually in conversation about conversation, get pounced upon. That's why during the May, I started looking something outside of orangery, like get a job, thinking about do something else. 
Uh, normally, I can I can get help. I, I think you you do so. You, you do two, uh, three things. One is the CDO, the Korean Development Office. Uh, they will talk with you regarding your interests, regarding your background, to tell you or recommend you apply some jobs. The second, uh, some clubs like uh, Impact Investment Club, they're sending weekly newsletter. The weekly newsletter already have some job. You can apply, you can get to know what is out there. The third is sustainability certificate. Uh, this uh, group of wonderful people also sending us a lot of job opportunity as well, internship and also the real job. And they are really delighted to communicate for us to communicate, uh, sorry, connect us with the alumni. So we can get to know uh, people already out in the field, know their path and know what other job opportunity they have for us, uh, the new grad. That's great, thank you. Anybody else wanna share their recruiting experience? Yeah, I, I suppose for me. Um, so I, I originally was targeting the alternative protein space for the summer. And um, I think, uh, you know, kind of what Ada said, the, you know, the pandemic hit and it changed things a little bit. So I was, I originally wanted to apply to like impossible foods beyond meat, stuff like that. And then around March, they just pulled all the internships off their site. <laughs> and, uh, I, and at that point, that was kind of my like, oh crap moment. So, uh, but I, I think what really worked out is the CDO stepped up a lot and posted like a ton more job postings than like usually come at, up around like March and April. And uh, this one nature's find happened to be on there. And I looked at it, I was, and I said, oh, sick, that's like alternative protein. That's exactly what I want to do. Um, so I applied to that and, and it, was, it was great that that was able to, that the CDO was able to make that happen. The, uh, but I, I would say probably the best resource for me, particularly as someone who didn't come from a background in sustainability and who like basically knew nothing about it before coming to Sloan was, um, it was probably the food and agriculture club because I wanted to uh, target, you know, alternative protein. It fits well within food and ag. And a lot of the resources, especially just talking with the second years at the time who had interned at a lot of these companies, it helped me build up a lot of knowledge around, you know, what do these, what are these companies concerned about? What does the competitive landscape look like? What kind of skill sets are they looking for? Um, and just learning about their personal experiences having these internships in the past too. Uh, so I, I would say for me, like what, I mean, the CDO got me into that interview, but what got me during the interview, uh, what, what helped me have like good things to talk about during the interview and what made me come across as a lot more knowledgeable during the interview was having had all those conversations with second years leading up to the whole thing. Great, anybody else? So the next question that I, I do want to bring up is, I know we've, we've talked about clubs and conferences, um, but maybe Emma, you could help uh, talk about this too, is social impact outside of the certificate. You know, if someone um, can't do the certificate or if somebody is interested in some other classes with, with our great faculty, do you have any recommendations for those who are interested in still sustainability and social impact, but um, can't do the certificate? and um, or maybe recommendations of other classes or conferences. And this is open to the whole panel as well. I can quickly just say that um, we hope you have time and interest in pursuing the certificate, but if for whatever reason it doesn't fit with your course of study or your you know, ultimate goals while at Sloan, you don't have to be doing the sustainability certificate to take any or all of the sustainability related, social impact related courses at Sloan. So that's not like you don't, you can take S-Lab without being a certificate student. So just to let you know that. Um, and then, like I said, at the initiative, we work closely with students um, through kind of partnerships with the different clubs like Food and Ag, like Sloan Energy and MIT Energy clubs, like the MIT Impact Investing MI3 club or initiative. Um, to offer kind of different panels and speaker events and ways to engage extracurricularly outside of class. Um, we support the student internships over the summer in sustainability. Um, and so I can let these students talk more about that because I think they have a great firsthand knowledge of that. But you can engage with the initiative without being a sustainability certificate student. And there's plenty of other 
professors and initiatives doing great work in social impact, um, like Zainab Tan's research on kind of the and the Good Jobs Institute. That's a great place to look if you're interested in kind of labor and labor issues. Um, I can drop a few more resources into the chat as well. That would definitely be helpful. I know I'm getting a lot of questions about class visits and connecting with faculty. I'm going to work with Emma and we are going to have some uh, faculty spotlights or if you joined us for our entrepreneurship fireside chat, we will be doing these in the fall. So stay tuned. Um, you know, unfortunately, we can't have you all on campus, but uh, we will be bringing you some fantastic faculty members um, who will speak about their research and their classes. So keep that in mind um, for the fall as we are approaching. But does anybody want to, again, speak upon, um, you know, outside of sustainability certificate or other um, classes or conferences or anything like that? So um, I'm part of the MIT Impact Investing initiative um, leadership team. We call it MI3. Um, and one of the programs is Impact Connectors. So you can apply through the club um, and they will connect you with a social enterprise in the Boston area or even one of the um, MIT uh, institutes like MIT Solve or D-Lab to help you transition into impact investing by doing a hands-on project. Um, so that's one thing you can do. I mentioned Insight where I worked with a social enterprise. Um, I also was in New Enterprises, which is part of the ENI track, or if you're not in ENI, you can just take the class. Um, and I ended up partnering with a student who was launching a um, impact social enterprise. It was in FinTech in Myanmar, which was really cool. Um, so I would say there's a lot of different ways you can be involved, uh, even by being involved in one of the clubs that we mentioned and helping to either organize the pitch competition or going on a career track. Um, and then I also mentioned the finance research practicum in January, where like if you feel you're very busy during the core semester and you don't have time to take anything on, um, it's a class during IAP in January, and you will literally not have anything else going on if you don't want to. So um, it was great to just be able to focus on one practical project. And again, the professor sources all of the classes and matches you. So um, I would say if you feel overwhelmed, that's a great spot to get more experience. And all of these are outside of the sustainability certificate. That's great. Wonderful. I just also want to mention that Anna, uh, while she's answering the Q&A, she is co-president of the Sloan Energy Club, which is amazing. So um, definitely in the next like 10 minutes, pick her brain in the Q&A about that um, because it's a, a really phenomenal um, experience and a lot of work as well. Um, great. So I think some of the final questions um, I want to ask is what advice do you have for uh, prospective applicants through any program? What advice do you have uh, for them as they are exploring their journey to get their MBA and, and get into sustainability or continue in sustainability and social impact? Don't be shy, Kelsey, I'm gonna go for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I would say two things. One is just try and talk to as many people as you can. Um, I think really talking to people from different schools, talking with people who are in different programs really helps you get a sense of what the different schools are like, um, You know, what types of different careers people are looking at. It's just really helpful to talk to as many different voices as possible. Um, I would also say keep an open mind. Um, like for me, I, you know, have worked for seven years before coming into school and I was like, I'm an environmental person. Like, that's my thing. I do, you know, I'll come in and I'll do like environmental sustainability and that's what I want to do. And since coming to business school, I think I've become a lot more interested in kind of like economic justice issues and like that side of the sustainability picture. Um, so I think just keeping an open mind and trying to learn as much as possible is really useful. Great, and Kelsey, I have a follow-up question because we're getting yep. a lot of questions about your internship at BCG. Um, mm -hmm. Why did you decide to take that role in consulting? Um, how did you see it kind of helping your career post MBA and were you able to focus on sustainability during your time at BCG? Sure, 
Um, so I decided to go to BCG because I had never worked in the private sector before. I'd only done nonprofits and government work. Um, I thought it would be a good way to learn a lot of leadership skills, management skills, like be exposed to a lot of different industries and just try and, you know, it's like almost like a postdoc for your MBA kind of thing for somebody coming from a non-traditional background, especially. Um, and I did, so I, I actually, I worked on a public sector case over the summer. So I guess, depending on how you look at it, um, sort of social impact. But um, yeah, that's something I'm interested in doing. I'm going back full time next year. So interested in doing that kind of work when I return. Great, excellent, and congrats. That's wonderful. Um, anybody else want to share any kind of tips uh, for our attendees today who are going down the MBA or some fellows route? I would say in choosing a school, um, I guess I was really focused on career opportunities post-graduation. I really wanted to make sure it was a um, transitional period for me. And so I was kind of laser focused on getting the statistics um, of people who showed interest in sustainability and then actually pursued a career in that. Um, so in addition to talking to people, I would like, sometimes the club shows leaderships from past years and you can like look them up on LinkedIn and see how many of them um, went into, you know, traditional roles versus sustainability related roles after. And I think that'll give you a sense of like how um, the job opportunities look and also what the peer pressure is like at the school and what types of careers people go into post-graduation. Um, I would also definitely ask how competitive it is to get into the clubs and opportunities that you're interested in at any MBA program. Um, and I think the collaborative or co competitive nature of the student body as well as the size of the student body will affect that. Um, so I would just be clear in your mind, like, are you trying to explore a lot of things or are you trying to totally transition and then figure out what metrics within a school will help you decide if that's the case. And then in addition to talking to people, just go on LinkedIn and, and see if that bears itself out. And a lot of schools also have um, career reports where they'll list out if there's, you know, three or more students who went to a certain company, they'll list that company. So that's also a good resource. Great. I'm also going to go off of what you said and, and just go to Emma quickly about making sure there's, you know, enough space. And I think that's one of the benefits of Sloan is that you are in a smaller community and given our flex, flexible curriculum, there's always plenty of opportunity to get involved in classes and clubs. But Emma, is this a sustainability certificate? Is it competitive or is there, um, you know, the off chance that people don't get into the certificate? Uh, so there's no application process, so it's not competitive and it's kind of designed to be at your own pace. So if you can fulfill all the requirements by the time you graduate, then you have completed the certificate. You don't have to do any of the courses at any one specific time. The only exception there is the capstone course in sustainability is designed to be taken at the very end of your last semester at Sloan, just to embed you in the cohort of students graduating with the certificate that year. But we can even be flexible there if um, any kind of real issues arise. Um, but yeah, it, it, it fits really nicely with a two year program at Sloan for sure. Um, and it's doable with dual degree programs and um, kind of the different kind of programs like SDM, which is the System Design Management Masters, the Supply Chain Masters, which is split between Sloan and the engineering degrees. Um, so we've had a lot of students make it work within their very, very busy schedules at Sloan. Um, so we're confident that it's, it's doable if you're interested in it. And if you wanna kind of choose your own adventure and take classes that are interesting to you with, without doing the certificate, that's great too. I just wanna to add to that, to Emma's point, um, that I came in like assuming I would do the sustainability certificate, but I haven't even had to think about it just because all the classes that you need to take are classes I would have wanted to take anyway. So I feel like if you're interested in sustainability, they're probably mostly classes that you would plan on taking anyway. 
Great. Anyone else, um, any advice? And if not, um, for somebody who's looking at Sloan, who's not really sure about sustainability, are there any other clubs, like student clubs, that you recommend them taking a deeper dive in as they explore Sloan? I think Anna would say the Energy Club, um, but anybody else uh, want to just chime in? The food and agriculture will be the highlight. You can talk to Brandon. <laughs> I think the MI3 is the uh, net impact investing like sort of thing. You can talk to Anna and uh, 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 Kaptia. And another one is uh, uh, Hike for Inclusion. It's kind of like social justice, how to bring diversity and inclusion into the organization is a really good one. Uh, you can reach out to me, I can put it to the uh, right person. That's great. Yes, Hack for Inclusion is one that is very popular. So thank you for mentioning it. And Brandon, I saw you wanted to answer as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just so happy that Ada is championing the food and ag club before I'm even able to. <laughs> um, but that's definitely one. Uh, the sustainability summit that I'm working on also a great thing to get involved in. Um, there's a couple of um, there, there's a couple of like sort of competitive prizes that you can either apply to as an entrepreneur or that you can. Uh, you know, help support and organize and that gets you connected with a lot of entrepreneurs really related in sustainability too. So there's um, the Rabobank Prize that happens every year and that's focused a lot on food sustainability specifically. Um, and then we also have a water prize too and that's focused on like a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of intersection between food and water, obviously, but that's focused a lot on, uh, you know, how to get clean water, potable water to everybody and um, how to conserve scarce water resources when, uh, you know, you have it when you have like, you know, climate change issues throughout the world. So um, I think there's like definitely different dimensions of, you know, industry related clubs, uh, summits and conferences and like competitive competitions or prizes that you can get involved in. And those are probably the three aspects you want to move down. Also to add to Brandon, the Clean Energy Prize, um, which was an offshoot of the 100K competition, um, which is another thing that you could either help support or um, apply for. That's great. Thank you. So unfortunately, we're out of time, but I do want to mention again that um, this is the end of our summer student experience webinars. We will pick them back up in September, uh, hopefully with action learning to kick us off at the end of September. Um, we are always here to answer questions. Uh, as I said, Emma and I are going to work hard to get some faculty fireside chats and social impact and sustainability. And um, thank you all for joining us. I hope our panelists and everyone joining us is safe and healthy during these difficult times. Um, but thank you again for joining us and we hope to see you virtually soon again. So thank you. Take care. Thanks everyone. Thank so you.